back, guys. So this uh, might stir up a little bit of interest within the subscriber group. You guys know there for a short while, this portfolio was comprised of the ARK ETFs, um, that of which I, I still really enjoy, I, I really like. In this video, I'm going to explain how I was able to leverage that quick profit. It ran up so quick in the portfolio, really got me thinking of, about recalibrating this portfolio. And that's exactly what I did. I, I took the two top end funds and I'm rolled them off, uh, put ARK KK and ARK G uh, in the larger accounts. Uh, my bullish conviction is, is still intact. Uh, I was unable to purchase one additional technology in my major broker, which was kind of odd. And I'll explain that a little bit. And then I allowed the other two to roll off. So for you guys that, that follow me, uh, and have invested in the ARK ETF, I think the M1 Finance Opportunity provides a phenomenal entry to the ARK ETFs. Um, I just wanted to take a different direction with this. Uh, and the dividend growth portfolio is something that I've always wanted to do. It's something that I feel like can be built out. Um, with a $15,000 bill now that we're at in this, I really wanted to kind of diversify and grab some exposure in some of those companies that I don't want to own in the larger accounts. So I'm going to roll out this portfolio review. You're going to see uh, the, um, the newly established uh, super dividend growth portfolio. And uh, hope you guys appreciate the, the work on my end to be as transparent as I can uh, in explaining the moves that I do. So with that, guys, we'll jump in and we'll conduct the review. That's the most interesting thing about the social media experience, especially in the investing arena, is that you can come in and, and consume some content, understand how people are seeking their exposure to the stock market. I think a lot of people look at the stock market as a place where um, only gambling takes place or only speculation, or it may be a place where you can lose all your money. Um, good on us social media content creators that have enough confidence in our programs. And there's a lot of different strategies that you can actually succeed in in the stock market. What, uh, what that does when we do that is we blow down barriers for new investors coming in and, and, and sitting back and watching a testimonial of somebody like myself who has, yes, been ex uh, experienced uh, and had a, a lot of years of, of investing experience uh, under my belt, that of which comes to a head in these videos. Um, because this M1 Finance opportunity that I've rolled out to you guys over the last couple of years has really transpired into something very, very special. Um, I, I've yet to utilize a, a, a better um, uh, tool uh, that uh, makes the ease and, uh, and use as easy as M1 Finance. And it's just conducive to wealth building. And I think for a lot of new investors out there, this can be extremely attractive. Um, I enjoy wealth building with M1 Finance better than I do with Merrill. Um, the platform is, is, is extremely different, um, a different philosophy. Um, for you guys that are seeking out this content for the first time, I really want you to understand M1 Finance is not for day traders, okay? M1 Finance is uh, for passive investing. That's it. If you expect to get onto M1 Finance and start to trade in and out of stock and be jumping in and out of the market from one day to the next, you will be sorely disappointed. But for those investors out there that are serious about investing and serious about pursuing wealth, I, I would contend that passive investing is one of those things you need to look at initially on the onset, not looking to engage in a bunch of speculation because you can really win with passive investing. Um, I've doubled this account, as you can see. I'm up over 7,000. This has really taken on um, a third life. This started as my aggressive growth portfolio, where I had 12 stocks uh, that um, that grew well. Uh, I make I made money on every one of them. Uh, those were the Google, Facebook, Amazon of the world. Then I transitioned for a very very short time into the Ark ETFs. And they ran up really sharply. I was happy with that. Um, and I, I think they'll continue to run up. Uh, I was able to liquidate that portfolio on kind of a short whim for a couple reasons. Uh, the first and most important is because I felt like I was a little heavy handed uh, on the growth aspect. And we're starting to get up to an amount of money here that's getting a little bit more serious. 
Um, if you want to start with ARK ETFs and you want to start with a, a smaller amount, you just need to understand the risk uh, and the amount that you have uh, devoted to that level of risk in the portfolio. So I leveraged that into what you see here now. And this is going to be my dividend growth portfolio. This is a small page um, out of one of the YouTube content creators that I really enjoy a lot, Joe Carlson. He's since kind of scaled his opportunity with M1 Finance a little bit different than um, just dividend growth strategy specifically. He's got kind of a speculative portfolio. Um, and I do something similar on the passive side. Uh, this is a single stock portfolio that's comprised of 67 stocks. <clears throat> And these are companies that I don't want to own in the larger accounts. Um, these really just kind of round out the portfolio exposure um, within each of the sectors uh, minus real estate. So real estate I have housed in the Roth IRA. Those are non-qualified dividends. So I felt it better to just focus on the 10 other uh, major sectors of the S&P. And that's exactly what I did. So if we click in here, I built this portfolio a little bit more the way M1 Finance um, means you to build out these slices. So this is my technology slice, for example. And this allows me to come in here. You'll notice that there's a few hundred bucks in each of these names. Okay. This has allowed me to grab exposure from some of these companies with an emphasis on dividend growth, yes, uh, but also uh, an a strategy on my part to try to broaden out the reach of the portfolio. Is this going to grow like our ETF? No, it's not. Um, I'm not asking it to grow that way. What I'm asking this to do is provide myself with a baseline um, within M1 Finance that can be built out over time. So as I add to this portfolio over time, I would expect that each of these 10 strategic buckets honestly are all paying to the portfolio you can see here how it's it's already started to make some money I mean I'm up over 30 I've had this a couple days um, the financial sector up thirty dollars so even even with the power here another thirty dollars so a, a three uh, a three and a half percent slice in this after a couple days of owning it and a couple point and a half gainers out of these uh, heavier sectors that I have, technology and financials, with energy being a little bit lighter um, on the scale is pre impressive. It's incredible. But when I start to dip into some of these sectors that are somewhat underrepresented in my larger portfolio, you can see here some of the method to my madness. There's only, shoot, 150 bucks here in total energy um, I feel at 66 Marathon. This is the first time I've ever owned Valero. Valero is one of my favorite top five energy companies. Conoco is also one of my favorites. Now, you'll notice that this is void of uh, Chevron, Exxon, and Royal Dutch Shell. But collectively, this adds a different dynamic and a different deeper reach into each of the sectors. And by using the power of M1 Finance, I can not only uh, dividend uh, portfolio redistribute uh, funds into these slices, uh, but also dollar cost average this up over time. Um, so I'm strategically adding to the sectors, but I'm adding to the sectors in a smaller amount. Let me jump into utilities here real quick. Yeah, there it is. It's just taking a little bit longer, but you can see here how I'm seeking out um, from the five, I did go ahead and add my two favorites in here, and that's fine. Um, Dominion, I've owned before. Uh, Nextera and Embridge as well, I added in here just for some additional exposure. And let me go back there and let's see if I wasn't just being, uh, yeah, I wasn't being patient enough. So you can see here, Medtronic, you guys have known to follow me for a while. Um, and Abvi, I've owned UNH Spotty, but I want to own it long. And then Abbott Laboratories and Thermo Fisher Scientific. Um, I've never owned these bo f before. So this is a great opportunity to just get exposure. Look at that. I mean, we're already up 2.5% and 1.62%. This is Wealth Building 101. Guys, this is how you take the pennies and turn them into dollars. This is how you start fundamentally investing in the stock market. And for a lot of you guys, you know, you, you might not be starting your portfolio with $15,000. Um, or 14 like this has, okay? You may not have the uh, starting capital, but this is a good goal that is reachable. 
This is just above that $10,000 mark uh, that I, I say is super important all the time. But for you guys, I will end up sharing this portfolio with you guys uh, as we grow it out. This is kind of the super portfolio. Um, this is comprised of just a lot of the different names that I wouldn't have otherwise owned uh, in my larger uh, accounts. Let's jump in here to Staples, and I'll show you this one last sector to start. Um, Colgate Palmolive I've never owned. Uh, Mondelez I, I have owned. Walmart I do currently own. And these I own up to... Costco I do not own so I made this kind of a flagship in this account and then of course I own you know some of these dividend kings and aristocrats I own in the bigger portfolios because you know they are worth owning but I don't dollar cost average those because they are such sizable positions I do drip the dividends um, but this allows me to dollar cost average each and every one of these holdings. So it's going to be fun to track this uh, going forward. Absolutely look into embolden and grab this dividends aspect. I think it's an underutilized tool within M1 Finance to, to take those dividends and roll them back into the underlying portfolio. And with the power of dollar cost averaging in this, it's going to be a lot of fun to see this grow and build out. With that, guys, we'll kick you back to YouTube. Conclude the video. All right, guys, so we've come out of the uh, dividend growth portfolio that's been newly established within M1 Finance. It'll be fun to track this going forward. If for nothing else, a, a new investor making their way onto the opportunity is going to find out that um, I strategize in a lot of different ways and I win in a lot of different ways. You know, there, there's not just a cookie cutter approach to investing and there's not just one way out there. Um, that can allow you success in the stock market. That's just it. Just doesn't it doesn't happen that way. So hopefully we're doing our job and blowing down barriers for you guys, and uh, hopefully you guys appreciate that and you understand some of my um, philosophy behind why I did what I did. I wanted to de-risk and de-lever. Um, I thought with the Ark ETFs running up so well and the uh, amount of money kind of getting real in this portfolio. I, I thought it was wise to kind of build this portfolio uh, in a manner that can accept the next uh, couple uh, income levels that I'm working for, the 25, 50, and eventually 100,000. Um, because I do now see this portfolio standing the test of time, whereas I thought the ARC uh, ETF portfolio was at best um, a short to medium term investment. Guys, if you appreciate the information, I want to make sure and subscribe to the message. Share the channel with friends, family, anybody out there that you uh, know that can benefit sitting across from somebody like myself who's got uh, as much experience as I do in the stock market. I do this message for you guys. Um, there's no secrets about that. No doubt about it. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video, guys. Appreciate you joining me. Uh, in this uh, new rollout of the uh, super dividend portfolio, guys. Uh, thank you so much again, and good luck in your investment future.